Hello everybody, how are we all? I had a really existential reading month this month, so I'm going to take you through the books that I read. Let, let me just fill you in. Stage one. My February reading list consisted of nine categories of different genres where I then picked a book to fit within each of those nine genres. The genres were these and the books to fit those genres were <laughs> these. So that was my, that was my reading list for the month. And it took me down some rabbit holes, I can't lie. I really, really enjoyed being pushed out of my comfort zone, reading genres that I genuinely wouldn't reach for usually. I honestly had such a varied reading month, but the thread, the thread that goes all through <laughs> my, my month, existential, existential. It was an existential thread through all the books I read this month. So I'm going to take you through it. I'm going to deep dive into it. By no means did I read all of those books on that reading list. Oh no. Oh no, I did not. <laughs> I read, let me get up my stuff. I had my hair done just now. One, two, three, four, five, six books six books. So the first book in my existential reading month was Cleopatra and Frankenstein by Coco Mellors. I did a whole reading vlog reading this. This was my lit fic pick of the month. It's a contemporary literary fiction and I gave it five stars. I genuinely had the best time reading this book. I loved every second of it. I think it's a true like masterpiece. I think it's a piece of art. This book is titled by the two main characters, Cleo and Frank. Cleo is a younger woman in her 20s living in New York and Frank is a slightly, is, a, is like 20 years older than her. They meet one day and it turns into this whole love story and it all happens very quickly. It's essentially about their relationship but also all the peripheral characters that are involved in their lives and how they're impacted also. Is it a character study? Yeah, it's a character study. The plot, there isn't much of a plot. It's kind of just following their life. It's more about the characters. And honestly, it reminded me a little bit of Virginia Woolf's writing. The way that each character had their own pocket of the novel like even ones that seem so peripheral they really then got like their own story told it felt like the consciousness was being passed around virginia Woolf's writing is stream of consciousness so it's passed between the characters yeah i really really enjoyed that about the book i thought the honesty and just like raw emotion and i said in the reading vlog it kind of feels like a heightened sense of reality like it's things that would happen in real life but it feels very much like on a hyperbolic scale. The emotions, the reactions, the experiences all kind of seem like larger than life, but it's all packaged within this life-sized book that deals with life-sized topics and just in a way that feels big. <laughs> the reason it's existential is because the, the topics and the emotions, everything is so mm. heightened and it and it really feels very like you question your own relationships, you question how you deal with things, you question your own mental wellness <laughs> and how you feel about yourself at the age of whatever age you are. So yeah, it definitely takes you through some loops. It makes you think about things on quite a deep level. It's really good. I really enjoyed it and I really highly recommend this book. So that was my lit fit pick ticked off. The next book that I read this month was, was In Ascension by Martin McInnes. This was my sci-fi pick for the month and <laughs> if you watched this reading vlog I genuinely had a little bit of a meltdown over this book. Like not a meltdown but I just got so lost in it. I ended up researching the author, researching all of his books, researching all the topics. Just I really wanted to know absolutely everything that I could know about this book and I'll tell you why. First of all I rated it four and a half stars. This book is, okay, bear with me because I know it's a science fiction. It's literally a science fiction, but it is very science. <laughs> it's the science. The science is in this. It's about a woman who studied marine biology and then she also gets involved in space. The kind of simple, the simple synopsis of it is that, but there's so much more to it than that. 
but it's also very much that <laughs> it's like pages and pages of science like actual hardcore i don't know what the hell you're talking about science but then there'll also then be a super poetic moment of human nature and human relationship it's it's definitely where poetry meets stem <laughs> it's where poetry meets fact it's where art and fiction meet science it's beautiful and it's so fascinating i'm not particularly into well, I didn't think I was into, you know, marine biology, space, things. I'm not particularly a sci-fi reader. This was the first sci-fi book I ever read, but it's absolutely fascinating. Even the things that I didn't really understand, I still felt like I was learning something. It challenged me, it pushed me out of my comfort zone. It pushed me to think about things that I just genuinely have never thought about before. I was reading about things and topics and events that I have never encountered before in a book. So it was just truly a really fascinating experience. I went through a whole journey of emotions the ending got me, the ending got me. It really is just a beautiful piece of work. So even if it's not your typical style, it's not your typical type of book, I truly recommend this. It's really, really quite interesting. And if you want to see my like real reaction to this book, in like real time, I do have a reading vlog of it, but it's very existential, obviously because it's got themes of space and how the universe was made, just those big science questions that we're never gonna know the answer to. And it really makes you zoom out and see yourself as like a person on a flying rock in space. It really put me through some loops in terms of really thinking about just how there's so much to life. Like there's just so much to it that when you study science and you study those kinds of things, you just really zoom in on all those tiny details and it makes you feel so small because we're, we're all just, you know, atoms and floating things and it's actually quite wild when you think about it so it really definitely makes you it puts everything into perspective and it also makes you question everything that you thought you knew about everything then we had boy parts by eliza clark <laughs> i yeah i also filmed myself reading this book and i had a bit of a trip reading this as well I still don't know how to speak about this book because I I didn't enjoy it, first of all. I rated it one star and it's not because of the literary, how good the book is. That is based off of my experience of reading it and how it made me feel and it made me feel icky and gross. But I do also know that so many people enjoy dark femme energy, dark topics, kind of reading about the grotesque and the gruesome and things that are outside of our reality most of the time. However, for me, I don't even like watching a film that has violence in. So reading about it and having to really like, you know, get into the details was too much for me. So I read this. I had a bit of an existential crisis myself after reading it. I needed a nap. It put me in a reading slump. If you're into that, go for it. It. I am not. That's basically it on that book. Also been reading The Courage to Be Disliked on my Kindle, which was my non-fiction pick. I'm not going to rate this book because I feel like with self-help books, it's very much based off of what you need at that point in your life and whether that's going to help you. You know, I'm not going to force feed you a self-help book if you don't need one or you're not looking for that right now in your life. And like I said, when I was picking the books in the first place, I'm going through a lot of change at the moment personally. So I just wanted to read this book to kind of ground myself in and making sure that I was making decisions for myself and I wasn't letting external factors kind of looking for validation from external factors. I was really making decisions for myself and what was best for me. Hello guys, it's the next day. I had a mare filming yesterday. My camera kept just cutting off. My audio wasn't working, so I'm back to finish the video today. Where I left off was talking about the courage to be disliked. And I think I was talking about how it came at a time in my life where I wanted to wanted to make sure that I was feeling super grounded and not relying on external validation to make decisions in my life, ensuring that decisions I was making was really coming from myself and from what I needed and what I wanted at that point in my life, etc, etc. I'm not going to rate this book because I feel like when it comes to self-help books, it's whatever you need at that point in your life. If this kind of book is what you're looking for or what you're 
after right now, then I do recommend it. Format of the book is essentially like a conversation. The cat's eating her food, if you can hear that. It's essentially a conversation between a guru and a man who is dealing with really negative thoughts about himself and other people and his life in general. And it's basically the guru trying to instill these values into this man and sort of change his mindset towards this negative way of seeing the world and seeing himself. It's definitely a different perspective that I've read before in these like self-help books, but it is essentially saying that we're very much in control of our own reality and our own thoughts, and it's in our capacity to create the life that we have convinced ourselves is out of reach, or the small things that make us feel content or satisfied or fulfilled in life are in our reach is essentially what it's saying and we can all work towards those things and then finally i've just finished alone with you in the ether by olivia blake that was my romance pick last month and it's actually quite funny because after i finished reading boy parts i said oh i need a teehee book i need a airy fairy teehee book and <laughs> i then went and chose a book titled alone with you in the ether like the least tee hee title you could ever read but i thought that i've never read i'd never read olivia blake's writing before i've heard so many good things i had heard that it was quite existential intense um like metaphorical prose which is fine i was ready for that was i ready for that i don't know but anyway i leapt into the book it's 300 pages long and it took me two weeks to read. <laughs> because I finished it, I think yesterday, I have had a little bit of time to sit on it. I gave it 2.75 2 stars overall. And that is because I really appreciated the writing. I really appreciated the fact that it was experimental. It was very metaphorical and unique and the characters themselves. It's basically about two characters, Aldo and Regan, and it's about their experience of the world more than anything. It's their psyche and how their unique view on the world impacts their interactions with others, the way they move in the world. And then these two, these two people come together and it's quite like a tumultuous experience of their relationship. So it's it's nice to read a romance that's very different, extremely unique, has very unique views of the world from the internal perspective of the characters. However, I did find it to be, and there's a line in the book that says something like overwhelmingly metaphorical, and I underlined it and I just thought, yeah, yeah it is <laughs> the book felt like all of my anxious overthinking thoughts being put onto a page and then reading it back to myself that's how it felt and it felt very intense and a little bit overwhelming and when i'm on my commute in the morning and i'm there reading you know like oh god like it was kind of hard work to get to get through i found it to feel a little bit tedious at times how sort of metaphorical it was but I, it doesn't take away from the fact that I do appreciate something different and I appreciate that you know she self-published it to start with I believe it's not that I didn't appreciate the writing what was being done in the book I just personally my experience of it was I wasn't really gravitating towards it I wasn't really excited to pick it up and read and it did take me two weeks to read a 300 page book it's a very existential book some of the concepts that I talked about in it about time and tra space travel and time travel and mental illness and questions about the universe and ourselves that really brought brought this whole video together because every single book I've read this past month has been along the theme of existentialism in some way shape or form. It has been a very interesting reading month. There were some really high highs and some very low lows but overall I really enjoyed exploring different genres and different authors and picking up books that I just genuinely wouldn't have just naturally gravitated towards if not sort of trying to push myself out of my comfort zone and push my boundaries. However, I do think for my next reading month, I am gonna do a mood reader. I'm gonna do a mood reader month. I just wanna pick up books that I feel like reading at that time and see where it takes me. We're gonna have a moody march and yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited what's next. I think I need a, like a palate cleanser or something along those lines. 
or to get stuck into a big series or something like just something big and new and fresh so that is what is to come as always please leave your comments and your feedback or any suggestions for me i hope you enjoyed i will see you in the next one thank you so much bye